That Bertune is a bridge that keeps your guitar perfectly in tune forever. This seems like something that most guitarists would be interested in, but for some reason, Evertune has been popular primarily in the metal community. So today I'm going to explore if it makes sense to consider the Evertune if you're a jazz or blues guitarist. So we're going to discuss its strengths and weaknesses and how that may or may not apply to a genre without chugs. Our guitar for today is the Aviator Warbird and this is the Pilot Edition. So let's get started. Although there's a lot of different types of jazz guitarists, I'm going to make a few generalizations to speed up our discussion. Now, these are definitely not rules that apply to all jazz guitarists and they're not required to play jazz, but they are pretty common, so let's discuss them. First, jazz guitarists often use heavier strings tuned to E standard, and they rarely deviate from standard tuning. Traditional guys almost never bend strings, and it's even common for jazz guitarists to go a very long time without changing strings. Keep in mind that as electric guitar strings get older, they lose a lot of their top end and brightness, but jazz guitar players often roll off that high end anyway. And they use a lot of Gibson arch top guitars, so, you can imagine that trying to do BB King style bends on an arch top guitar with 14 gauge strings would be extremely difficult. But today, a lot of jazz guitar players use semi hollow guitars with a center block and even regular solid body guitars. And both of these style of instruments can accommodate an Evertune. So far our jazz tests, I used 10 to 48 flat wound strings on this guitar. Flat wounds are not required for jazz, but I like them. So flat wounds 10 to 48, and this is how it sounds. that I notice when using this setup is that I can play my bass strings as hard as I want when I'm doing those walking bass lines and I don't have to worry about them being out of tune and this really helped me be a bit more expressive when playing my bass lines. And the next thing that I noticed is that while I was playing these different chords no matter where I played them on the neck they were very in tune and pleasant to listen to. that even if you have a guitar that's set up perfectly and you have the intonation set perfectly, as you play the guitar in different positions, you're naturally going to press harder or press lighter. You might fret slightly off here and there, and all of that's going to contribute to your intonation. Again, that's even if you have a perfect setup. And if you don't have a perfect setup, well then all that stuff's going to be amplified even more. One other important thing to think about is that most jazz style guitars, be it a 335 or a full arch top, they usually have tunematic style bridges or floating bridges, both of which, in my opinion, are really, really frustrating to intonate. So when I first started playing jazz guitars, number one, I wouldn't ever focus on re-intonating the guitar if I experimented with changing string gauges because it was just so annoying to do. Eventually, I realized that you have to re-intonate your guitar, so then I stopped experimenting with strings because it just became too much of a hassle to get used to them. that intonating the Evertune bridge was actually even more simple than my normal guitar bridges and that's because as you intonate the strings aren't moving so you don't have to keep retuning them as you intonate the bridge. I'm certainly not an expert on Evertune but I can say that I found intonation very very easy. And it only took me about an hour to learn how to use the Evertune bridge and I only broke one string in the process. Long story short, I think this is amazing for jazz. But the way it's currently set up, I can't do bends and I can't use a strong vibrato and of course, these techniques are crucial to playing blues. So we're going to have to reset up the way the Evertune is working, and this will be a good time to briefly explain how the bridge works, at least to the best of my ability. Of course, check out the Evertune channel if you want the full details. So the Evertune has three potential points of contact. When your strings are totally slacked, they're resting on the bottom stop, and as you begin to tune, the bridge lifts off of the stop and begins to float. This is kind of similar to floating tremolos in that we're balancing string tension with spring tension. When the Evertune is floating and unable to touch the front or back stops, you're in zone two. As you continue to increase string tension, you'll eventually move to a point where the bridge comes in contact with the front stop. 
And at this point, the Ember Tune is no longer engaged and you can bend freely and use vibrato freely, but then you lose all the benefits of having the Ember Tune bridge to begin with. So if we back off just a little bit from that top stop, we're now in zone two, so we're getting all the benefits of the Ember Tune, but we can still use vibrato and bending because the second we start to bend, we hit the top stop and the pitch changes. Again, I'm not an Evertune expert, but that's my understanding of how the system works. So I basically set up the E string, the B string, and the G string to that perfect area. And then I have the bass string still completely in the middle because I'm not going to be bending them anyway. And this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So of course, as you heard, we can still bend strings and they do still feel normal, but they don't feel exactly the same as when you bend a string on a regular guitar. There's just a tiny difference in the response. When it comes to playing vibrato, I did find this a lot more challenging than on a standard guitar. And I think that's because when you're right below that zone two point, it takes a lot of force to bring it out of the zone two in order to hear that vibrato. So if you're trying to do a wider vibrato, you have to bend and pull a lot to get it to move in pitch. I usually play a lot more gently and it took me a lot more force than I'm used to. If you're someone who always plays hard and heavy anyway, you might not even notice it that much. Now, the last thing I wanna do is talk about the Evertune guitar as compared to a regular fixed bridge guitar because there is a huge difference there. I know a lot of guitar players don't like the way that a floating bridge guitar feels because when you're bending and doing vibrato, you do actually feel those springs interacting with your left hand in a way that you don't when you have a fixed bridge guitar. So if you don't like the feel of doing bends and vibrato on a floating bridge, you definitely won't like the way it feels on an Evertune because it's very similar in that regard. So my summary is that I definitely now want an Evertune guitar that's set up for playing jazz with a little bit of blues. And that's mainly because I love how in tune all the chords are. And of course, I love never having to worry about the guitar being out of tune. I still don't think it's best for people who play blues already on a normal guitar because it is going to feel fairly different. But at the same time, if you started playing blues on an Evertune style bridge and you had it set up your specific way, that would just be normal to you and a normal guitar would be the thing that feels weird. So keep that in mind as well. Definitely looking forward to getting my own Evertune guitar one day.